Hey guys, um, I hope you're all having a good dot con. Uh, I'm Dieter, I'm from the grants team at the Web3 Foundation, and today I'd like to talk a bit more about our grants program, uh, some of the stuff that we've done since it was launched about eight months ago, and some of our current priorities for things that we want built. So just a very high level overview about what our grant program does. Um, we're focused on three things. The first thing is software development. So we want to fund projects to develop open source software related to Polkadot and Substrate. Um, this has definitely been kind of the biggest focus of our grants program so far. Um, but we also fund research into protocols related to Polkadot and Substrate. Or like, it, well, research into like Web3 protocols um, around Polkadot and Substrate. Um, and also community engagement efforts, which is something that, that Hutch explained that we're really going to start doing, doing much more of. Um, but in this talk, I'm really just going to focus on the software development aspect. So up on the screen are basically some broad categories of work that we've funded um, since around the beginning of this year. I'm not going to go through everything, but just kind of highlight some of, the, some of the interesting stuff. I mean, it's all super interesting and it's all important, but uh, just to give you a bit of a flavor. Um, so one of the first things we funded, um, one of the first grants we gave, I don't think it was the first, but like very, very close to that, were for alternative implementations of the Polkadot runtime environment. Um, so for those of you who aren't super familiar with, with how the protocol works, uh, one of the unique things about Polkadot is that you've split out basically all the specific features of parachains, so basically the state transition function, into something called the runtime. And then all kind of the lower level components, so like consensus, like consensus on the relay chain and like networking and storage is housed in the runtime environment. And, and basically, you know, runtime, sorry, the runtime will plug into the runtime environment. And this gives you like really nice features of upgradability and swappable con consensus that Polkadot has. Um, so the first implementation of the Polkadot runtime environment uh, was done by Parity in Rust. Um, which is great, but when that was kind of a little stable and was starting to get use, one of the things we really wanted to do was support alternative implementations uh, in different languages uh, that can attract a community of non-Rust developers. Um, like, you know, uh, there's a lot of other languages out there that, that people know, and we wanted to get these people into our ecosystem, even if they didn't know Rust. So you heard from these groups earlier, but we funded Chainsafe to build Gossamer, which is a Go implementation of the Polkadot runtime environment, and also Soramitsu uh, to build a C++ implementation. So these works are ongoing, and uh, you know, hopefully, I, I'm sure we'll get some, some really great products out of that, so that's super exciting. Uh, and really be able to start like attracting more devs to our ecosystem who don't necessarily know Rust. Um, oops. Ah. Another, another interesting area are modules for privacy preserving transactions. So one of, one of the projects here is called Substrate T uh, with a capital T, a capital E, and a capital E. So like TEE -E for trusted execution environment. Um, so this is a nice one. It, it basically adds a module to Substrate where um, a customized state transition function can be executed within a secure enclave. So this has a nice, like a lot of nice uh, use cases, such as you know adding the ability to have confidential smart contracts, adding the ability to have um, like confidential transactions, and you know the, the problems with SGX environments are well documented, but. This still gives developers you know, a choice in adding like, privacy infrastructure to what they're building. Uh, another one is zero chain. So similarly to Substrate T, uh, they're you know, adding kind of a, mod, um, a module to Substrate, but that has um, a zero knowledge proving scheme. Uh, so right now, I think what they're built, they're really concentrating on payment transactions and giving private, like on private payment transactions. So think of like a Zcash sort of. Um, but again, like as a developer on Substrate, this gives you, you know, some choice for how you want to, uh, you know, if you want to introduce privacy into your transactions. 
The last one I want to talk about, and you know, we're not even going to get close to through all of these uh, to get through all of these, are uh, modules for verifiable claims. So this is a recent grant um, by a team in the U.S. who want to add, like again, like modules to Substrate, so people can introduce um, basically systems for verifiable claims. Uh, so what's a verifiable claim? Like, actually, can everyone in this room put up? their hands if they know what verifiable claims are and what these systems sort of do. OK, so like a few people. Um, really, like all a claim is, it's a statement. So it's an arbitrary statement of fact. So one claim could be that you know, I have a university degree. And then a verifiable claim comes in when you want to like have some trusted authority attest to this sort of data and this to be useful on chain. So what would happen would be that you could have, say, like the university um, that I claim to have a degree on actually sign this claim, and then now, you know, like with a digital signature, um, and then now, you know, probably people are going to trust it more because this actually came from, you know, an authority who, who should be right on this. And so this is cool because it's a way for you to kind of bring you know, this specific external information on chain in, you know, and trust certain facts um, in kind of a more efficient way than, than um, how we do it today. Now, where this actually gets much more interesting than these what are called verifiable credentials, which I just, just described, which are a subset of claims, is when you think about like how arbitrary these statements can be. Um, so like this statement can be whatever you want. And you can actually, I think, and we don't, I don't know if this is done, but I think this is, could be the direction we're moving, is that you can use these claims to represent like any event, any arbitrary event or thing or, you know, whatever that has occurred uh, externally to a blockchain and actually like get these claims on chain or get these statements on chain in a verifiable way. So for example, if you sold your house to someone, this could be encapsulated in a claim and then attested to by, I don't know, the, the land registry or something. And, and what this actually does is gives us a nice way to actually use the potential of smart contracts as you know, agreements between two parties in a low trust way, where we're actually now getting the ability to get external data on chain and actually use these things. So I think verifiable claims are gonna be like one of, you know, one of the first major use cases of blockchain, not probably not the first. And I'm, I'm really, really excited that somebody's building this infrastructure in our ecosystem. All right, so those are kind of some, this gives you some idea of some of the stuff that we've funded. And now, most importantly, what do we want to do now? Um, so up on the board, or the screen, are some, like, current, some of the current priorities for the grants program. Uh, not all of them. Like, if you, you know, if you go on our website, which I'll share later, um, this has like a much, much more comprehensive list. Um, but this is kind of some of the, the particularly important stuff. So first one, bridges. Uh, the promise of Polkadot to give you this future of interoperability, like it highly, highly depends on us bridging all major blockchains, or maybe not all major ones, but as many as possible. Like you know, parachains are, are great, and that's super, super valuable functionality. But we really need to build bridges. And earlier this week, I released an RFP uh, for bridges. Um, so, like, I think the highest priority ones for us are probably Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Zcash, but we are interested in doing much, much more than that. So, if you guys want to build bridges or you want to write, like, a specification um, for bridges, like, trustless bridges between blockchains, then please get in touch and, and let's talk. Um, another thing that I released an RFP on, or we released an RFP on earlier this week, uh, were alternative toolings to generate runtimes, well, alternative tools to generate runtimes in uh, languages other than Rust. So, you know, basically, the way you build a runtime now uh, means that you need to know Rust, and this is great. But you know, like I kind of explained before, Rust can be like a, a, a high hurdle, like real or perceived, um, to many developers out there. 
So in order to attract like more people to build with us, uh, we really want to, to build alternative tooling to generate runtimes in Rust. And the RFP that was released um, wants people to like is asking for a tool to generate runtimes from assembly script that matches the features of Substrate. Uh, and assembly script is great because if you're a developer who works in JavaScript, um, then you know working in assembly script is is a very easy transition. So this this really opens up development to to many many more parties. So if you're interested in building that, you know again we have an RFP out, um, and it would it would be great. And, and and you know besides that too, we would definitely be interested in supporting projects. Um, that builds to build tools to generate runtimes in languages other than assembly script. So if you have a proposal or you know that's something you guys are interested in, then then please get in touch. Other stuff. So parachain development kits. Um, you know this is something we're going to have an RFP out for probably in the next few weeks. Um, right now, the way to do this again, you need to know Rust. Um, you kind of use have to use a combination of Substrate and Cumulus, which is in development, and we just want to build an alternative to that. Um, stable coins. So stable coins are hugely important, and there is no Polkadot stable coin right now that's under development. You know, I think. Like along with verifiable claims, I think, and like I know, like the major use case of blockchain networks right now, or like one of the biggest, is is DeFi applications. And in order for those to be built on Polkadot in any like interesting way, we need a stable coin. New kinds of blockchains that can act as parachains. So if you're, you know, building a new type of blockchain that has an interesting potential use case, um, particularly like what I've written up there is ones with succinct state transition proofs. Um, so, you know, there, there's designs out there like the one Coda's doing that where you use ZK, ZK snarks basically to, to give the ability for the blockchain state to be checked in constant time. Um, so so that's, that sort of thing is nice. Uh, and then the last one I'll touch on are IDE integrations. Uh, so, you know the the language. So the language under development for building smart contracts on substrate chains is called Ink. Um, so this is being built by Parity. And what would be really nice is to have like a nice IDE where people who are writing smart contracts can do that, and you know, in an environment that has like nice user experience where you can deploy them and test them and just you know just have a, a comfortable way of actually of actually writing these things. Um, there's some other stuff up there, but I, I won't go over it. And so, if you're excited by any of it, any of these things, or have other ideas for how you could contribute or how you think you can contribute, then like please take a look at our website, grants.web3.foundation. It has a much more comprehensive list, guidelines, um, and just general yeah general stuff. Uh, you can apply there. It has instructions for how to apply. Um, if you have questions or you want to talk about this stuff, please ping me. Like my, my email and Telegram are on there, and would love to hear from you guys. Uh, lastly, the Web3 Foundation is hiring. Uh, we're hiring for a ton of jobs, and some of them are in grants as well. So if you're interested in working with an awesome team uh, in, you know, in, in a great space, then please, please go to our career website, which is listed at the bottom of the page. Um, so I have one minute and would love to take any questions you guys have. Okay, no questions. Well, thank you guys. Enjoy, uh, enjoy the week. <laughs>